For me, it really set Ian McKellen apart from everybody else. This was a great demonstration of why Sir Ian McKellen is an unbelievable actor. Top notch, yeah. So me and you have done a bit of theatre, right? Mm -hmm. We did it at school together. Mm -hmm. So we've dipped, we've certainly dipped our toes in it. And so we're kind of familiar with that world. And there are idiosyncrasies of that world and of the people within that world yeah. that you would recognize when you meet people. You're like, I know they've got a theatre background. Yeah. And this film is crafted not just by the writer or the director or the actors, but everybody in this film loves theatre. Right. Okay, so it permeates throughout it. There are tons and tons of instances of this, okay? But specifically, the dialogue has been written by somebody who loves theatre and who loves literature. And the way it shows itself, the way I could best describe it is, you know how Tarantino's love for cinema permeates throughout his films? Mm -hmm. The person, the people behind this, their love for theatre and the writer's love for theatre and literature permeates throughout this, but it doesn't translate as well. Mm. And one of the areas where that struggles the most is the dialogue, because basically what you've got is lines that are incredibly poetic and really, really beautifully put, but not what a, a human being would ever say. Mm. And every single other actor on the set, a lot of people have said Gemma Arterton was very, very good. And Mark Strong was very good. Mark Strong's in this. Yeah. He had hardly any lines, uh, but he was awesome. Gemma Arterton wasn't that good to be completely honest and okay. and it wasn't because she isn't a good actor but because these lines of dialogue just sound strange coming out of people's mouths they just okay. sounded weird now i've brought one line of hers that i could find so she's speaking to jimmy mm -hmm. and she is pleading with him and she's saying why are you so horrible to me and the line is i grew up reading you i wanted to act because of you i so wanted to meet your standards but you think i'm appalling now when she said it i just thought i could hear that on a stage but it doesn't sound right on the big screen it just sounds right. weird everybody struggled with it except from mckellen right he didn't just manage to make these lines sound real right he actually sung with them he brought something okay. out of them that regular dialogue just doesn't have a lot of the delivery that he came out with felt both real and better than real okay and he managed to make insanely difficult dialogue work and so i just came away from it and i thought ian mckellen has just demonstrated not just that he can interpret incredibly mm. difficult dialogue but that he can make it sing on the big screen Something really interesting about that is uh, there's an, a very old um, clip of Ian McKellen on the Dick Cavett show, okay. which would have been in around maybe the 70s or the uh, Dick Cavett show went on for a long time. It could have been a bit before that. But this was a young Ian McKellen. Now, for many people, Ian McKellen only really gained notoriety in the late 90s early 2000s when okay. he was in uh, the x-men and lord of the rings yep. uh, and there's a film like monsters uh, i can't remember exactly what it's called where he got a, an oscar nomination now he was a of he was pretty old when he became globally famous mm -hmm. before that time he was a very successful theater actor but certainly mm -hmm. not a household name uh, and on um youtube that dick cavett show has quite a lot of very famous clips. It was like a talk show in America, but a bit more intellectual than the, the stuff you see now. Some really interesting yeah. conversations that go on, brought in loads of interesting people, politicians, people on sides of different um, uh, arguments and, and different political stances, as well as actors. A little highbrow, and a little kind of little like sophisticated stuff. But it wasn't just like supposed to be you know educational. It's just how talk shows were. Yeah, for sure. And now it's a bit more... Entertainment just, focused. Yeah, exactly. Now, there's a really interesting um, uh, clip from Ian McKellen. So before he was a household name, even in the UK. Sure. And he went over, it's an American talk show. And he is talking about the difference between film and stage acting. And it's how he, his main points are around how you are, when you're inhabiting the screen, your, your micro expressions need to be on point and you can kind of do you might be able to do whatever you want with your hands and he makes a comment how you'll have really successful film actors go on stage 
and it's it's quite painful sometimes because of the way they they don't know how to move their body they feel out of place and it's interesting that he was the one who that theater talk translated so well for yes. as someone who has been so successful in both mediums uh, and clearly he was a step ahead of the others in terms of achieving absolutely what they were trying it really highlighted specifically his professionalism you know yeah. like you say about how he his he has been successful in both worlds and I really want to make it clear that I don't want it to sound like I am saying anything bad about the rest of the cast because I actually think the real thing that let it down was more the dialogue. It was just mm. where it just wasn't meant for the screen. Right. And there are very few people who could make it work the way that he did. Now, thank God he had 90% of the screen time or 80% of the screen time because that absolutely rescued the film. 